All right. Hey, everyone. Thanks for coming today. I'm going to talk about this project where we propose a new space of support systems that provides expert support for software developers. And we use two studies to motivate this new space, and we then inform the system designs in the future. So why do we need on-demand programming support? We define on-demand programming support as providing answers to questions about code when they are needed. These questions may be things like how to use an API library or how to structure a program and so on. And on-demand programming support is great because a third-party resources can provide answers that help programmers to write better code. Let's first take a look at the current programming support. So with the current support resources, developers will use building IDE support to save the effort of remembering all the syntax details. They will look for code snippets, examples, from online community support, such as Stack Overflow. Or they'll check other uh, developers' code uh, repositories to find examples with tools like GitHub. Or they find online tutorials from sites like W3 Schools. Although they can provide support like this, these resources have a variety of limitations. For example, the results from the web are generally lack of contextual, con contextual information which makes the integration process uh, inefficient for developers. All the results are often not personalized, which requires the developers have high level of expertise to modify them. Additionally, the query often needs to contain sufficient context so that the results will be more accurate. This is difficult and time consuming for developers. For many limitations like this, the best support resource is other developers who have the expertise in the domain. Finding a colleague who is familiar with the context and nearby, or hiring freelancers with the, with the expertise and available from online platforms like Upwork can achieve this goal. But colleagues are not always available on demand or not to be able to support frequent questions. Also, hiring reliable workers who have sufficient knowledge of a project usually takes very long time and requires certain level of evaluation skills. Recognizing these issues, within the past few years, companies start to offering online one-on-one uh, -on -one mentoring service, such as Hack Hands or Code Mentor. These services allow the clients request to developers to create, uh, to create requests and connect them with the experts. The services also provide a shared code editor and text or uh, voice communication channel. These services represent the state of the art, uh, the state of the art for for seeking remote help from expert programmers, and use synchronous one-on-one -on -one communication model. Although the mentorship model has solved most of the issues we mentioned before from online resources, it also has a, a few limitations. First, there is a coordination cost of finding an expert who is available to help. If the first expert does not have the sufficient expertise, which they cannot know until they connect, there is a further cost in both time and money to find a new expert. One-on-one -on -one mentor, uh, mentoring also requires developers to watch what the other person is doing for the whole time, which prevents them from moving on to other tasks while connected. In addition, this model is impractical during a long uh, programming session, uh, as the developer has to pay the expert to remain st standby between questions. Although, it's as, although it has all the limitations, the mentor service uh, is a great model, and we want to find more about it. To better understand how well this model of mentor support can help programmers, we conducted in-lab studies to simulate this one-on-one -on -one support uh, synchronous model. So we look at two research questions. What questions do developers want to ask an on-demand support agent? And what are the design needs of providing remote developer support on-demand? Better understand these two aspects of the design space will allow us better reason about the challenges that we need to be overcome and cr to create fast, useful, and efficient assistant tools for software developers. Now I'm going to talk about the two studies that we conducted in details to answer these two questions. Because the type of queries developers will make are influenced by the tools that they use, 
In the first study, we want to better understand the type of questions that a software developer would want to ask an intelligent uh, assistant. In the best case scenario, if there's no limitations on its time, compensation, and the capability. We asked five participants to work on their own project, programming projects on their computer while asked them to imagine that they have an intelligent human assistant nearby who is capable of answering any questions that they verbally e express. Participants could use their hypothetical system to answer questions or perform a variety of types of work. The hypothetical system served as a conceptual probe that participants could make requests to. And what we found is that the high-level strategic guidance shows in this rectangle is the type of request that participants ask the most. A typical request is like wondering if there's a way to ensure they understand if the radio button in HTML can be color coded. This type of request needs to have personalized support, which could not be provided from the web, but other program other developers. We also observed that participants made some requests that can be easily find an answer on the web. What surprised us is that four out of five participants asked for effort-saving type of request. For example, one participant asked the system to do some unit tests for him. This type of request is beyond what we usually understand as a question. And our study shows that this is a popular need for developers to program more efficiently. However, this type of request is not well, is, is not, uh, cannot be automated. Additionally, we found that participants often phrase questions that requires contextual information of their code base to understand. Only 18% of participants' questions were self-contained, meaning they do not need any context information to be answered. And lastly, every participant indicate that the timely responses would be crucial to the adoption of such uh, a system. So now we know the type of request that developers would need and then we followed up with another study to see how well this model of mentor support can help programmers. In this study, we explore the communication needs and breakdowns between experts and the developers. This time, we're focusing on the communication challenges, such as onboarding challenges, contextual needs, and interaction difficulties. And here, we set up a study uh, in this way. Uh, we paired up 24 participants with half being requesters and the other half being helpers. They were assigned their roles based on the scores from the pre-survey. Each pair was physically separated and the requesters were given programming tasks and they may ask for support from helpers via Skype, which are connected through the session. During the session, requesters shared their screen with the helper and they were asked to program in JS Bing, a shared uh, online shared editor to save configuration effort. To better simulate the model of mentor support, we told the helpers to be reactive, meaning they only respond to queries and did not proactively uh, propose solutions and approaches. This allows users to initiate the help interaction just like the mentor service support does. And from the observation and interviews, we found that there are six major needs that requesters care about. The red, rec the red rectangle shows that the requesters from every session needs immediate a response, which means the re requesters want to communicate with the helpers without noticeable delays. One interesting finding that we were not expected before was that almost all the helpers were interested in knowing the developer's coding background. For example, a, hel a helper said, uh, if I knew where she was coming from, it made it more efficient because I won't be asked, uh, you know, what this is, how do you make this thing. Another interesting finding is that although we provide a state-of-the-art tools for, to support developers, we found evidence of inefficient communication from 11 out of 12 sessions. Here is a common conversation. A helper said, just bring the cursor after the curry brace, and the requester would say, after the curry brace, here. And the helper said, yeah, and then put a comma and put a string called JSON in the quotes. While the requester is typing, the helper is saying, no, no, the quotes. Another requester said, the code she sent me can run on her side, but I'm not able to run it on my side. It'd be great to have a, 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 if she can share it in some way, like do a comparison of the output, that would be great. 
after finding all those needs from these studies, we took one. We took the first step in the space by prototyping some features and add uh, to address the needs. We first asked participants what they wish they could have to address them. For example, a helper said, "I wish I could have something like Google Doc for the code." So after we find all these needs and the feedback, we want to prototype. We want to propose a different model of support systems. Uh, from the first study, we found that many types of requests cannot be solved without a human support. So we suggest to use human power to provide help for programmers. Also, we noticed that the importance of context, as we mentioned, 82% of the requests are not self-contained. We suggest that this model will automatically capture all the context, such as the code reference and developer's background, and uh, pack all those and send them over to the helpers. To instantiate this space, we prototype uh, six system features as listed here. And I'm going to focus on the text and the voice feature for now. Uh, to make the request making more efficient, we, all, we also provide, we, we prototype this feature that enables both text and voice modality for requesters to verbally describe their request in the code editor. Plus, they can select their content as well. And, um, oops, sorry. Um, and then we, uh, we went back to uh, 11 of uh, our 24 participants and asked their feedback. And uh, uh, we want them to, uh, we want them to, uh, and then to have one more round of design iteration, we went back to 11 participants and showed them this feature and get their feedback on how it fits their use cases. We found that some types of request tasks is more effective, while for others, voice is. For example, one participant said, uh, I prefer text because a helper can send me example, but text will be very slow if I want to explain what I'm doing. Voice can do that interaction very quickly. As an ongoing work, we are working on a system to instantiate the rest of the features. To recap what we did, we conducted a study to find out what questions developers would ask a non-demand support agent when they are programming, and we found seven types. We then conducted a remote pair programming study to better understand how well the model of mentor support can help programmers and we found six design needs in that particular space. Lastly, we draw design takeaways and recommend and prototype features for systems that aim to achieve the goal of providing on-demand programming support that we mentioned as be at the beginning of the t talk. All these pieces motivate us to inform a broad space of support systems and presented a first glimpse into the challenges and opportunities of on-demand expert support for software development tasks. Additionally, we are planning to explore more on this new space from other perspectives. We saw constantly that the pair has the same kind of interaction, which would be great if we can autom automate some of those processes. And we also plan uh, to allow developers to better control their information that they want to share with the helpers in order to reduce the privacy concern. Another interesting open question is that how to best motivate and compensate experts uh, for their help. And we'll look at different cost structures for on-demand support for, for real uh, deployment instead of in-lab studies, which might change the way that participants view the cost. And uh, uh, thanks for listening. Happy to take questions. So hello, uh, I'm Kong Chen from Fuji's lab. Uh, so when you studied the uh, questions programs asked for on-demand uh, help, uh, did you analyze the uh, profiles of the developers, like their background, expertise? My question is, different people may have different questions. Right, yeah. So you're talking about the first study, right? Just asking hypothetical. We did collect their background, uh, but we didn't actually 
trying to focusing on analyze those background, and they're coming from they're actually using different even different programming language. So, but it's an interesting question, and uh, it's definitely uh, programmers are have a dynamic background. And uh, what we are looking for is that a, uh, this type of system will support any any type of uh, any type of background uh, uh, program. Any any programmers who have a, who have a different background. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Uh, in this space or in, in this space, yeah. well, so we are thinking that crowds, crowdsourcing, we can use. Basically, we are proposing to use uh, expert crowd to support end users, and um, so. Right. So as we mentioned before, uh, uh, a couple of ways we are trying to design the system for, or like either team-based, like we can outsource uh, questions to other colleagues, or we can outsource this question to uh, freelancers. But um, yeah, the crowdsourcing support here is uh, not uh, not in particular like uh, platform, but more like general. Um, many to one type of support.